It says there, for the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. That is what we'll see Jesus say of himself there in our key verse for today. When I read that verse, when I hear these words of Christ, I am left with a feeling of great joy in my soul. Some will not understand the reason for my great joy, but I tell you today that my great joy, it comes from a place of understanding that I could have been lost and destroyed a long time ago. Yet I stand and I rejoice before you today because God has made a way for me. God, I want you to know today can be, and that God is our way maker. Through all of your burdens, through all your trials, through all your tribulations, I want you to know today that the Lord can and will make a way for you. Over the past couple of weeks, we have seen that God is always at work on our behalf. The Lord, we have seen, works in the invisible arena, that arena of things that goes well and far beyond our power and our control. In that arena, we know that the Lord is working with all power and authority over all things, which even includes the hearts of us, of mankind. We also know that God is at work this very moment by watching over and keeping his flock. God, we know, is our good shepherd and he tends to our every need and he does so around the clock. No matter which direction our enemies come from to bring us harm, we know that the Lord shields us we know that God protects us. Again, I say to you today that this should all be very reassuring to us. To all of those that genuinely believe in him, we are assured because the Lord, our God, is watching over us. However, not all have such faith in the Lord. Not all have such faith in God to believe that he has their back or to the fact that God can make a way for them. This sentiment tends to be born from a place of circumstance. For example, as I have said before in the past, people tend to look at where they are in their life. And if they are in a place where they are not a fan of it, where they are not satisfied, where they do not like where they are, they tend to blame God. Non-believers will question the mere idea of us, those who genuinely believe in the Lord. They will question the mere idea of us saying that God is our way maker. For those that will bring into question the way that God sets, they may suggest that the way of God seemingly leads to nothing but hardships and to nothing but destruction, where there is no payoff, where there is no profit. Some may even suggest that the path of God, it only leads to doom. For anybody that goes down this path, they will say that you are going down a foolish path that will lead you nowhere. Now, these sentiments, I tell you today that they are not brand new, as there were many that lived during the days of Jesus that shared similar views. And they chose in those views not to follow after Christ. We must answer this question today. Does the path, does the way that the Lord set lead to anyone's doom and destruction? The sentiment behind this question, we know as genuine believers, we know that it is a false sentiment. 
So let's take a moment today to show how it is a false sentiment so that the doubters of God today can learn to trust the way that the Lord will set for them so that they can learn, in other words, to follow the way that God will make for them. To the disciples, Jesus, see again, we will see made it very clear here in our key verse for today that he did not come to destroy anybody's life. In John's gospel, Jesus, he backed up this thought when he spoke about being a disciple, when he spoke about being a follower of his. Jesus said in the eighth chapter of John's gospel and in the 31st verse that those who choose to follow him and abide in his word, they are truly his disciple. His true followers, Jesus said, would know the truth and the truth would make them free is what we see Jesus say there. So let us understand that when you choose to follow the path that Jesus sets for you, it is a pathway that leads to liberty. It is a pathway that in other words leads to freedom. Though it may be a difficult path to walk down and receive, it is a blessing to be free. It is a blessing to have liberty in Christ Jesus. By no mean does liberty in Christ, by no mean does liberty speak to doom and destruction when you have freedom in Christ Jesus. The freedom that Jesus spoke of was freedom from heavy burden, the heavy burden of the guilt of sin. With this freedom, those that follow Christ, they no longer suffocate under the weight of sin. No, with this freedom, we breathe in the life that Jesus gives us freely. This life, it sustains us so that we can keep on enduring, so that we can keep on making it while we are on this journey. Now, there always seems to be a bit of hesitation in trusting the Lord to go before us. There always seems to be a bit of hesitation when it comes to trusting God to set the path for us on our journey. In the ninth chapter here in Luke's gospel, we find two examples of how we often hesitate when it comes to following the Lord. In the first example, we will see there in the 59th verse that one desired to wait for his father to pass away so that he could be there for his family before he would go and follow Christ. Another, we are told in the 61st verse, wanted to first take some time out for himself to tell his loved ones goodbye before he followed Christ. The two mindsets shown here are a, let me wait to see how things go mindset and a, let me do something for myself first before I follow Christ type of mindset. To one, Jesus explained that heaven should be his first priority. When he said, let the dead bear their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. To the other, Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. As we know, God is always moving to make a way for us. And the expectation for you today is for you to follow him with no hesitation. The expectation for us today is to follow Christ without straying off the path. You see, our desire should be a desire of what God has for us. 
Through the prophet Isaiah, we have heard that the Lord says that he is currently doing a new thing for us. The Lord declares to us that he will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The question that we must answer today is whether or not we will trust the course that God is setting, the course that God is making for us. Yes, the path may be one that seems both narrow and treacherous, but will we trust the way that God is making for us? Will we trust our way maker or will we hesitate? Will we put off following after Christ? Will you trust the path that God is making for you? Will you trust that it is leading you to your next blessing? I tell you today, we truly answer these questions, not by saying we believe, not by saying that we have faith, but by our actions, the actions that we take. Will you pick up your feet today? Will you follow God? That is the question that we must answer today. In last week's message, we took a look at the children of Israel as they stood trapped between Pharaoh and his army and the Red Sea. In this week's message, I again want to take another look at the 14th chapter of Exodus. And I want to continue on the thought that we see here in the ninth chapter of Luke's gospel of Jesus saying that he did not come to destroy men's lives, but he came to save them. The Lord makes a way for us. And I want us to again, take another look here at the children of Israel as they stood trapped at the Red Sea here in the 14th chapter of Exodus. Now, I want y'all to understand that when I'm using the word trapped here, that I'm using the word trapped very, very loosely because I don't believe that the children of Israel were trapped at the Red Sea. You see, when something is trapped, that means that escape is incredibly difficult or it is essentially impossible. And I tell you today that by no means were the children of Israel trapped there at the Red Sea with no escape. Mm -hmm. There was an escape, the escape being the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. Let us remember that the angel of God was with and was watching over the children of Israel as they were making their way to their blessing, their blessing being the promised land. Yes, at that very moment, we could certainly consider that the Red Sea was a barrier that sat before them. Yes, we could consider at that very moment that Pharaoh and his army was another obstacle and that that obstacle is stood behind them. However, what were these obstacles? What were these barriers to the Lord, our God? Is there any barrier or obstacle that can stop the Lord? Again, think about that question for a moment today. Is there a barrier or an obstacle that can stop the Lord, our God? Is there anything that can stop God? In his letter to the Romans, Paul, he asked, if God is for us, who can be against us? Paul, he wondered who or what could separate us, the genuine believers, from the love of Christ. Paul then said that he was persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, principalities, powers, heights, or death, nor any other created thing could separate true believers 
from the love of God. In other words, Paul was saying that there was nothing that could block God. There was no barriers that could stop God is what Paul was saying there. Do you believe that today? For the children of Israel, they had just watched the Lord demonstrate his power and his authority over all things. Plague after plague, they witnessed the Lord move with all power and with all authority over all things. We know that God is omnipotent. We know that God is omniscient. We know that God is omnipresent as well. In other words, we know that God is sovereign and that the Lord rules over all things with all power and with all authority. We know ourselves, we have seen it in our own lives that there are no barriers, that there are no obstacles that can stop the Lord from moving on our behalf, from taking us to a blessing. We know that ourselves, but again, I say to you today, there are doubters. There are doubters that doubt that God can make a way. We must show them. We must show them that not only can God make a way, but that God can make a way out of no way. Yes, there are situations that we often find ourselves in where circumstances may seem dire and we may even feel stuck. We may even feel trapped. Yet I say to you today that we are never trapped because God watches over us and because God is with us. By no means will those who follow the Lord ever find themselves stuck or trapped if they remain faithful and if they follow him. You see, it is only when our faith stops that we either get stuck or we get lost. That is of our own doing. So I encourage you today, remain faithful. And to the doubters today, I say to you and I encourage you today, have faith. Learn to believe, learn to trust in the Lord. While standing before the Red Sea, in order to reach their blessing, the blessing of the promised land, there was only one direction for the children of Israel to go in. They had to move. Again, I say to you today that faith isn't just a word. Faith isn't just saying that you believe. Faith is an action. There was only one direction for the children of Israel to go in. And that direction was the direction that God would lead them in. When God begins to take us in a certain direction, we often question and we often believe that there are other ways that we can go in order to reach his blessing. Now think about how foolish this sounds for a moment. You see, it is odd that we do this because the Lord knows exactly where the blessing is that he has for us. And he's going to take us directly to that blessing. So why would we ever question him? Why would we question the one that knows where our blessing is and is taking us directly to it? Why would we question it? Why would we move like we know a better way to get to the blessing that God has for us? Why would we believe that we know better than the one whose blessing he is given to us? It makes no sense. For the children of Israel getting to the promised land, it seemed impossible with the Red Sea sitting before them and with Pharaoh's army sitting at their backs. Again, yes, there are times where God shows us a blessing and it seems practically impossible for us to be able to reach that blessing, to reach 
what he's promised. But I tell you that trust, faith in the Lord is required. Let God take you directly to that blessing and stop hesitating. Stop questioning. Stop thinking. Stop believing that it is impossible for you to receive that blessing. At their very first obstacles that faced on their journey, the children of Israel, they acted in a manner that I believe is very familiar to us. The children of Israel, we see in scripture, they began to panic. Don't we panic today? They began to question. They questioned Moses, which meant that they began to panic and they began to question God and his direction. Boy, don't we question God and his direction today, don't we? They asked out of their panic. They asked out of their fear because there were no graves in Egypt. Have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Now, I want to remind you that the children of Israel, they were initially thrilled to have been leaving the bondage of Egypt as they carried away with them all sorts of riches and treasures from the Egyptians. You know, the start of a trip or the start of a journey, that is always the most exciting part about the trip. But sooner or later on that journey, we hit a wall. We get kind of sluggish. We get kind of tired. With Pharaoh at their back and the Red Sea sitting before them, the children of Israel, they hit a wall. They began to feel hard pressed on every side. They felt as if God had delivered them to their death and to their destruction. Their faith in the Lord, I want you to understand that it was lacking. It was greatly lacking. Again, I want to remind you what Jesus said in our key verse today. Jesus said that the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. The Son of Man being Christ, Christ being God in the flesh. God does not desire to destroy anyone's lives. He desires to save them. Now, let us understand that this has always been God's mindset towards mankind. He does not desire to destroy us. I believe proof of this is shown to us through the great flood. There are several times throughout history where we all could have been lost, yet we are still right here today. Amen. We're still right here today with the same opportunity of being able to follow the Lord of being able to receive his great blessing of eternal joy. Again, we must learn to trust where the Lord is leading us rather than to question him or to feel like he is leading us to our destruction. Remember what the Lord said through Jeremiah when the Lord said that his thoughts towards us are thoughts of peace, a future and hope. Therefore, the Lord's actions the way, the course that he is setting for us today is to give us peace, to give us that future, and to give us that hope. The course that God sets for us today is to give us that blessing. And again, I ask, do you believe? At the Red Sea, Moses believed that God was his way maker. At the Red Sea, Moses, he stood as the example of the kind of faith that you and I should have when it comes to trusting God to make a way out of no way for us. Moses, we will see, said to the people there in the 13th verse in the 14th chapter of Exodus, Moses said, do not be afraid. We ought not be afraid when we take the course that God has set for us. Moses then said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord today. He said, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. 
Moses, he went on to say, for the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Mm -hmm. Then look at these words that Moses said here. These words are powerful. Mm -hmm. Said, the Lord will fight for you. God does not desire to see you destroyed. God will fight for you. And then Moses said there, you shall hold your peace. This was an encouragement for the children of Israel. And I tell you today that these words, they should sit in your heart as an encouragement for you today. Stand still and see the salvation, see the, de the deliverance, see the liberation of the Lord our God today is what I encourage you. This was, and it still is, an encouragement to have faith in the Lord our God. I want you to understand that Moses said this in a moment that I do not feel the words of Scripture can fully encapture for us. Again, the children of Israel, they, I believe, and Scripture shows us, they were in a full-on meltdown. Thousands and thousands of voices, I believe, were screaming and shouting in great panic and in great fear. I pictured this moment as a moment where Moses essentially had to tell the people to shut up for once and to let God be their way maker, to let God go to work. I genuinely believe that a lot of us need to have someone say to us at times when we are panicking and when we are full of fear, worrying about what God is or is not doing for us, I believe we need someone to tell us to shut up sometimes and to let God be our way maker. I believe we need that sort of encouragement at times. We need to hear those words. Moses, we will then see there in the 21st verse, he stretched out his hands over the sea. And the Lord then caused the sea to go back it made the sea dry land as the waters divided. Notice that the Lord was literally doing what he said he would do through the prophet Isaiah. God was making a road in the wilderness for the children of Israel there. Again, I'd say to you today, there was only one direction that the children of Israel could go in to reach to receive God's blessing. And I want you to see there that God was taking them directly to that blessing. Yes, it was a direction that seemed impossible, but there's nothing that is impossible for the Lord, our God. God was leading them in a direction that seemed impossible, but it was a direction to lead them directly to his blessing. God will do the same for you. As God did back then, he still does the same for all of us today. Yes, the enemy did pursue the children of Israel from behind. And yes, the Red Sea, it was before them and it was blocking them. But look at how God moved for his people. As we saw last week, God protected the children of Israel from their enemy, while at the same time, God, we will see here today, lifted them over an obstacle that seemed even more impossible than their enemy. Look at how God moves for those that belong to him. Again, I tell you today, there is nothing that is too hard there is nothing that is impossible for the Lord. Amen. The children of Israel, we will then see in scripture, they went into the midst of the sea on dry ground is what we're told there in the 22nd verse. They went between the walls of water. They were moving in the direction that God was leading them in. They were going down the way. Now, notice there in the 23rd verse that though they were going in the direction that God was leading them in, 
the enemy still chose to pursue after them. The enemy decided to go down into the midst of the sea. Oh boy, oh boy, that old enemy. Can't beat those enemies, can you? I often begin to wonder why the enemy is like this. Why can't the enemy just let us go in peace with God? I often wonder this. I don't know if y'all ever think about that. The enemy refuses to let us go with God. The enemy will do whatever is possible to try and keep us in his shackles. I'm talking about the devil there. The devil and his army will do anything to keep you from having that happiness. Will keep you from having that peace. They will do everything that is possible to keep you from going with God. Think about it for a brief moment. How the religious leaders who were the enemies of Jesus at that time, they were everywhere that Jesus was when all that Jesus was doing was sharing his father's message with the world. That is how the enemy is always antagonizing us. The enemy, this is how the enemy moves, always trying to hinder you, always trying to keep you from the happiness that the Lord desires to take you to. What I want you to know today is that when you follow, when you follow the Lord, you have no need to fear anything because God is going before you. God is going before you. God is setting the course for you. In other words, God is making a way for you today. There is no need for you to hesitate. There is even no need for you to be concerned because God, I want you to know, and I want you to hear, and I want you to understand today, God is not leading you to your destruction, nor is the Lord going to let anybody or anything destroy you as well. It's not going to happen under God's watchful eyes. As we have seen here in scripture today, it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians. We are told there in the 24th verse. He did so through the pillar of fire and cloud. And we're told there in that verse that the Lord troubled the army of the Egyptians. Scripture tells us that the Egyptians, they found it rather difficult to pursue the children of Israel into the midst of the sea. The enemy gave chase on the way that God was making for his flock, but they found it difficult, we're told, there in the 25th verse. The wheels of their chariot fell off. The enemy couldn't give chase as they desired. It's amazing to me. The enemy, as much as the enemy desires to attack you today, the enemy, I want you to know, will find it quite hard to have any true success against you. The enemy, I want you to know today, when you go down the way that God has set for you, the enemy can't overtake you. The enemy cannot destroy you. That's what I want you to know today. Through thick and thin, God is always there for us. Yet I feel I must ask this question today. And I want you to hear this question loud and clear today. Will we follow the Lord through thick and thin? God is always there for you through thick and thin. But will you follow him through thick and thin yourself? My answer to that question is that we should certainly be willing to follow God anywhere, regardless of the circumstance. You should be willing to follow God down any path that the Lord takes you. David said that through the valley of the shadow of death, he followed him. And through that valley, he did not have to fear any evil. Are you willing to follow the Lord in the same manner today? 
Are you willing to follow God down the same path that he will set for you today? We do not follow a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire today. The reason why we don't do this is because the Holy Spirit dwells within us today. The Holy Spirit not only dwells with us, but the Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit sets the path that we ought to be taken today as genuine believers. Now, our enemy may try to trouble us, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I want you to know today, the Holy Spirit strengthens us. And I tell you today that because the Holy Spirit strengthens us, we will endure as we go down the way that God is making for us. Through all my trials and through all my tribulations, I say to you today, I want you to know today that I rejoice because God clearly moves on my behalf. No matter what I am going through, the Lord delivers me unto another great blessing after blessing, and he does it over and over and over again for me. I tell you today that when you follow our Raymaker, you will always make it to your next blessing. God will always take you to your next blessing. You will reach that blessing. So I encourage you again today to rest assured. Rest assured that the Lord is going to make a way out of no way for you. When you feel like you're stuck and when you feel like you're trapped, I want you to again know today and be encouraged by this word. You're not stuck. You're not trapped. Because God is with you. God is watching over you. I encourage all of you to go forward with your arms stretched outward today. Fully trusting in God to carry you over all barriers. When we do this, we will be just like the children of Israel. When they made it to the other side of the sea, the 28th and the 30th verse there in the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus shows us that Israel looked back and they saw their enemies and their enemies was lying dead on the seashore. None of their enemies remained. To all of those that love the Lord, God again does not lead us to our destruction. No, the Lord, he saves us. The Lord, he makes a way for us. He makes a way out of no way for us. And I tell you today that when we reach our blessing, we will look back and we will see every obstacle, every hurdle that we had along the way, we'll see that they are knocked over. We'll see pathways that we went down and we'll see those pathways was made in places that seemed impossible for us to traverse. The Lord will have made a way for us the Lord will have brought us through. God, I want you to know today, God is our way maker. And again, I ask the question, do you believe it today? And I hope that your answer today is a mighty yes. Yes, believe that the Lord is your way maker and believe that God will carry, that God will take you to your blessing. Amen. 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 Amen.